There are over 1 billion, billion, million different kinds of viruses roaming in every single corner of this planet. In fact, at this very moment, there are a couple million viruses in the very room you're sitting in. And every single one of these little pests is trying to penetrate your immune system and make your body their new home. Does that make you itch a little? We're always hearing about disease and how fragile life is. And don't get me wrong, it is. I've personally had my fair share of stupid moments where I've come to this conclusion. But that's exactly why people think our bodies are so fragile. Because death and pain are rancid in this world, but most of it is self-inflicted. Whether that's through tragedies like war, or tragedies like your mother's diet. In reality, our bodies are incredible. After all, they are the peak of 4 billion years of evolution. And our immune systems really showcase that. Because of the 1 billion, billion, million viruses out there, only 219 are able to infect you. The immune system is such an elegant piece of biological machinery. In a world filled with predators and disease, it's the immune system that emerges as our final guardian. An unsung hero that tirelessly defends us against an unthinkable amount of threats. It's a complex network containing millions of parts that all function together in a delicate balance to defend us. So let's explore some of the coolest parts of your immune system and hopefully give you the appreciation that it deserves. Starting with factoid number one. Your immune system has cells that can kill any virus or bacteria that has ever existed or will exist. That's right. In you right now, you have immune cells that can kill the bubonic plague, COVID, Ebola, you name it. Any random disease that may appear hundreds of years from now, or a virus that we don't even know about that existed millions of years ago. See, every pathogen has receptors on their outsides. So when an immune cell recognizes one of these receptors, they know an enemy has infiltrated the homeland. And your immune system has a library of cells that can recognize every single possible receptor. Okay, then why do people even get sick? Well, this library of cells takes some time to access. There are only a handful of cells that have receptors for the unique pathogen that infiltrated your body. So in the time that your body takes to find those cells, multiply them, and then get them out to the battlefield, the pathogens have had time to do some damage. But now that these specialized cells are activated, well, game over. Your immune system is old. Very old. Older than the queen. Although I don't know if I can make this joke in good faith anymore since she's dead. Bacteria have been the true rulers of this planet for 4 billion years. Multicellular life only came around about a billion years ago. So ever since the infancy of animal life, we've had to combat these little pests. The first predator. Now our immune systems are very complex, arguably the second most complex thing life has ever created behind the brain. Of course, it's had hundreds of millions of years to evolve to be this way, but there's some ancient systems that are pretty effective that still exist in our immune systems to this day. Let me introduce you to the complement system. This is the oldest part of the immune system, and the fact that it hasn't evolved away after 500 million years just shows how important and effective it is. The complement system is a bunch of tiny, tiny proteins that float around your body. Now usually, they're in a passive state just roaming and minding their own business. But when there's a pathogen in your body, one of these proteins, known as C3, not to be mistaken for C4, will recognize a non-human entity and attach to it. And once it's attached, it'll be in its activated state, and this will start a wildfire. Suddenly, any complement protein that comes along will be activated. Two activated proteins turns into four, which turns into eight, which turns into 16, and soon enough, there'll be millions of activated complement proteins. These activated proteins will cause mayhem to all pathogens that come along. First, they'll begin to swarm over any bacteria that it finds. Not only does this slow down the bacteria, but it makes it easier for immune cells to recognize and catch them, and then kill them. On top of that, the complement proteins begin to dig into the cell, ripping up its membranes and insides and they'll also rip apart any viruses that are just roaming around. If you're around people with different immune capabilities than you, you subconsciously find them more attractive. That's right, that weird girl that plays the tuba that seems repulsive in every way, but for some reason you just find so hot. Percocet, yeah. Percocet. Percocet. Might be because you have immune systems that complement each other. But what does this even mean? Okay, so your immune cells are pre-designed to be immune to some diseases. And this is because these immune cells already have these diseases' antibodies on their surface. But this is completely random. In fact, the gene that creates these MHC molecules is the most diverse gene in our species. So some people may have MHC receptors that make them better at fighting the measles, while others have receptors that make them better at fighting genital herpes. So the more diverse the parents are, the more likely it is that their offspring can handle a greater number of diseases. And the thing is, we subconsciously find people with different MHC molecules more attractive. But how do our bodies even recognize this? Well, through our wonderful noses, of course. Pheromones. 
And I'll make a video in the future going into more detail about all the subconscious communication that goes on in our fantastical species. So it goes to show, as much as the clan likes to spread the gospel of segregation, diversity is actually a good thing, scientifically speaking. Your immune cells are navigating experts. Say you're flipping through a Playboy magazine like the well-read person you are and you get a nasty paper cut. Now your blood has to focus on going somewhere else. Same with your immune cells. But how do they know where to go and that they even need to heal this cut? Imagine trying to find your way through a dark cave with countless options on where to go. These are your immune cells traversing through your blood vessels. Well, when you get a cut, the cells that got damaged release a bunch of proteins known as cytokines. And these cytokines will then spread throughout the body. And when an immune cell encounters one of these cytokines, it'll know something's up. Of course, the closer you are to the cut, the higher the number of cytokines. So the immune cells around your body will begin to move in the direction where there are more cytokines. It's basically like smelling a freshly baked pie in the distance and knowing where to go as the smell gets stronger. Having millions of these cytokine receptors allows cells to move to the correct location with extreme accuracy. But not only that, it allows them to know the severity of the injury. If there are a lot of cytokines, the cell will rush over with all it's got. If there are only a few cytokines, the cell will take its sweet time. Like my friends when I tell them I'm only two minutes away from picking them up. Your immune system can be the reason you die. One of your best killers in your immune system is the neutrophil, which is basically the Al-Qaeda of your immune system. They blow themselves up to kill their enemies. Problem is, that also harms your body too. In fact, all these little explosions are why your body temperature goes up when you get sick. But sometimes, the pathogens begin to win and keep on multiplying until your body can no longer handle it. And when that happens, these neutrophils will not stop the suicide bombing, and so your body temperature rises to a point that'll end up killing you. Of course, there are plenty of other ways your immune system can kill you. Now, for all you poor souls that had to sit at the peanut allergy table at school, you're well aware of how your immune system can let you down. An allergy is when your immune system overreacts to something that isn't really that harmful. In these situations, your immune system will attach to the receptors in the food you eat and treat them like a malicious outsider. Some specific cells are responsible for this, known as mast cells and basophils. Mast cells, which are heavily concentrated in the lungs, trigger responses that make it extremely difficult to breathe while also producing extra mucus. They'll cause your blood vessels to contract and allow reactive antibodies to travel throughout your body, which causes itching on your skin, inflammation, and a general feeling of being ass. Basal fills are there to make sure that the mast cells don't stop. With all the tools it's got, and if it really wanted to, your immune system could kill you in about 15 minutes. So what can you do? There are always things you can do to improve your health. You know this, I know this, no need to go into that. But there are some less obvious things you can do to help your immune system. First, breathe through your nose. Don't be this guy, you'll just look like an idiot anyway. You know, we probably evolved to think that this looks stupid because it's bad for our health. See, your nose acts as a filter to clean the air of any filth that might enter your lungs, whether that's dust, allergens, or even pathogens. On top of that, the mucus in your nose can trap and even kill some bacteria that may be in the air that you breathe. By breathing through your mouth, all this nasty air enters your lungs unfiltered. Another thing that can help you? Saunas. Being in a hot environment like a sauna can boost your body's production of white blood cells, aka your immune cells. Not only that, but saunas can help regulate the stress hormone cortisol in ways that can help fight infection. To optimize these benefits, you'd want to be in a sauna for around 15 minutes. Any longer would result in diminishing returns. That being said, you wouldn't want to go into a sauna when you're sick, otherwise, you know, you might die. And lastly, you'd want to maintain a healthy microbiome. Contrary to popular belief, your microbiome isn't just in your gut, but also in your eyes and other openings. This means eating fermented foods such as yogurt or kimchi. Also, try your best to avoid rubbing your eyes without washing them first. So yeah, there's a glimpse into the coolness that is your immune system. Hopefully you learned a little something and gained a little more appreciation for it. If you'd like to learn more, you can, you know, go to school or ask ChatGPT or something, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace!